Okay. Um, interim is on Thursday, but this also helps us with Unit 5, this trashy unit that <laughs> compares all three of these things together. Um, so I've got three functions up here, linear, quadratic, exponential. Um, I want you to list the characteristics. Okay, so just list as many characteristics as you can. I'm going to quickly go over some things, but uh, a couple things I'll point out that are a little bit more important than others, only because this unit is about comparing and contrasting. Okay, so go ahead and pause me, write down the characteristics, and I'm going to kind of pick and choose the ones that I like a little bit more than others. Okay, so that wasn't bad. I could have been a little bit more still, <laughs> but that wasn't me, you pausing me. That was just me pausing myself. <clears throat> okay, so hopefully you've paused me and you've gotten over me being crazy, uh, oh, which you probably shouldn't have. All right, so a couple of characteristics here. I don't even know if I want to use this one. Let's use this one. Okay. For, so for the linear, um, domain and range for this function are both the same. Domain and range are both all reals. And you're going to hear me say that a little bit more often now because it's a little bit easier than saying negative infinity plus infinity. But it is negative infinity to positive infinity. That's what all reals means. Um, okay, so x-intercept, y-intercept, I'm not going to go over so much. You should know the x-intercept, the y-intercept. Clearly the y-intercept is 5, and the x-intercept is negative 1. Um, so understand that. The only time it won't have a y-intercept or an x-intercept okay, is if the line is y equals something, which is horizontal, or if the line is x equals something, which is also vertical. So make sure you understand that. Um, the slope of this line is 5, and the y-intercept of this line is also 5. So remember, the slope comes like this, and the y-intercept like that. So this is typically slope-intercept formula, so y equals mx plus b. So just be careful of that, the slope and the y-intercept. Okay? Um, that's important to know. That's important to remember. Okay. Um, so end behavior, they all have end behaviors, that's for sure. So end behavior is, uh, as x approaches negative infinity, f of x also approaches uh, negative infinity. And that is because this, this line's going like this. It's got a positive slope. Okay? Um, so the other side of that is also true. As x approaches positive infinity, f of x also approaches positive infinity. And then again, because that line goes like this. Now, if this was y equals negative 5x plus 5, it would go downhill, and this would be reversed. Like, as it approaches negative infinity, it approaches positive. And then as it approaches negative, I'm sorry, as it approaches positive infinity, it would approach negative. Okay? Um, now, Linear functions have no asymptotes. They don't, because they never will, because they always approach a line. And if they don't approach a line, it's because they already touch a line. An asymptote is a barrier line that prevents something from getting really, really close to it. Okay? So this never has an asymptote. Um, we'll go on from that. So these are some of the keys. Okay, so let's go to the quadratic. Quadratics are a little different because they have some different things. Um, domain and range, you understand clearly. Make sure for the range, though, you understand where the vertex of this function is. So let's skip that. So let's go min-max, which is also called a vertex. Okay. The vertex is always the opposite of this and whatever that is. Okay. The opposite of this and exactly that. So the vertex is negative 2, comma, negative 2. And we also know, based on the characteristics of this function, that this function opens up because there's no negative transformation on, on the front. Remember. So uh, negative in the front implies that it's an x-axis reflection, so it would have gone like this. Right? So there is no x-axis reflection, so I know for sure that this is going to be a minimum value, because right? it opens up, which means it has a minimum. Right? Um, <clears throat> so the range then uh, on the y's is, without even looking at a graph, I know it's negative 2 to positive infinity, because negative 2 is going to be the lowest y value this is going to touch, because that's a min, so it makes sense. Um, and this goes to infinity. Now, uh, ooh. No parentheses, so if you caught me, good job. It's a bracket because it actually does touch negative 2. Asymptotes are different because asymptotes are something that gets infinitely close. Quadratics also have no asymptotes. The only thing that has that is exponentials. So that's our comparing and contrasting thing. Um, so we had our language arts part of the day. Um, so that's the range of domain is all reals. Range is different, so min, max, vertex, that's something specific to quadratics. So linear functions that don't end don't have min max, obviously, and exponentials never have a min or a max. Okay. Um, end behavior is a little different here, too, because quadratics always start and end at the same spot. So it starts here, ends here, start here, ends here, starts here, ends here, right? That's a weird dance. <clears throat> so the end behavior is as x approaches 
negative infinity for this function, f of x approaches uh, positive infinity. And same goes true for the other side. That's terrible. Positive infinity approaches positive infinity. Okay. Good. Um, min, max. Increase, decrease. I think we've kind of, we've done a good job with increase, decrease, so I'm going to hold off on that for now. <laughs> um, but remember the vertex, remember the range, the domain, and the end behavior, and make sure you understand that they have no asymptotes, because that's also really big. Um, oh, axis of symmetry. That's another one that we have not actually talked about for a while. Axis of symmetry, and that's super important. The axis of symmetry is whatever the x value is of the vertex, just written as a line. So the axis of symmetry here is x equals negative 2. Okay, so it's whatever the x axis or the x point is for the vertex as an axis of symmetry as a line. So make sure you understand that that's super important. Okay. Um, last one here, exponentials. So exponentials, they clearly have something that the other two don't, and they have an asymptote line. Um, so let's go with a couple of things here. Domain is all reals, and it will always be all reals for purposes of this class because we're not going to go any other crazy ways here. The range is super different. So all base exponential functions have a range of 0 to infinity. All base exponential functions have that because the asymptote line will always be y equals 0 on a base function. Okay? Super important. Okay? Because um, the line will approach and it looks like this. That's what that function looks like. All functions that look like that, that have a positive or a whole number in front, like this, if this was a 1 half or 1 third or 1 fourth, though, it's a decay function. So it goes down like that. This is a growth function. Okay. All right, so asymptote line is y equals 0. All um, base exponential functions have a y-intercept of 1. Okay. This is also super important for a landmark. So yesterday on Choose Your Destiny, we talked about a landmark point. Basically, adults say landmarks as if they're lost or something. I'm looking for a landmark that I know so I have a better idea of where I am. Um, so that's what you want to do here, too with an exponential if there's a transformation question. So quadratics are a little different because it's easy to find where it moved to. Um, and linears are also a little bit easier in that aspect. But an exponential function, if it's transformed and you don't know the, like the roadmap of that, it's hard to tell what transformation occurred. The landmark that you need to look for is where is the y-intercept now? And picture in your mind, the y-intercept was at 1. So where did it go from 1? So if it went up a couple times, how many points did it go up? If it went down, how many times did it go down? Like you know what this looks like typically because the asymptote line is y equals 0 and the function kind of rests above that line. Okay, so make sure that you're aware I'm looking for a landmark point and an exponential function only has one. It's the y-intercept right now. So just tell me where it went. Okay, <clears throat> If you have a transformation question, I don't know if you're going to. Um, what else is there? Uh, so no min max, domain range talked about, uh, no vertex obviously. So those are some of the most important ones of this. Okay. So also uh, go over your notes or your cheat sheet for um, the functions, the five functions we talked about. Geometric sequences, it's the only one that has an n minus uh, one. Exponential growth and decay, compound interest, and half-life, and we should be good to go. All right.